Hi, I'm Kevin with Genesis Rescue Systems, and we're here with our friends from Chicago's Bravest Stories podcast to present a 12-part video training series on real-world practical applications for passenger vehicle extrication. In one, in four, truck two, truck ten, England 82, battalion two, fire 1020 North Main, help is on the way. Oh, hey, Corey. Hey. Can oh, you just man. step on sign of refusal of services, please? <laughs> Thanks, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> In our next video, we're going to do a dash lift operation using our cutter and our spreader when we have major side impact to where the passenger would be sitting. It becomes often difficult to lift the dash when we have major impact on the A column. And we're gonna show you a few different things to consider when dealing with that complexity. When we assess the patient and understand that the dashboard is either buried in their chest or the steering column is in their chest, we aren't able to successfully do a dash lift. So we're gonna to have to resort to doing a dash roll up using our ramp. Now it's very, very common to get to a point of the extrication where you've removed the B post and we really have nothing to push off of with the ram at that point if we're using a rocker panel support or any other uh, uh, object material. So we are going to use the rocker panel support and the spreader and clamp it down on this rocker. What you can see here is very common in the Midwest where we have a lot of road salt where the rocker is completely destroyed and there's no structural integrity. So using the rocker panel support is gonna be critical for a successful dash roll up. Process of the dash roll up, we've already got our A post cut. We're gonna make a relief cut in that A column. It doesn't necessarily need to be severed all the way in an older vehicle, but that's gonna be a real big requirement for a newer car. So we are gonna make two cuts in this A column to completely sever it, and then go into the process of clamping our rocker panel support with our spreader. Now there are two things that you want to keep in mind when using the ram. We want to make sure that once the chrome piston comes out of the barrel, we keep a hand to the outboard position because if the ram does lose connection point with that A post, we can prevent it from hitting us in the face. We want to watch the equal reaction towards the rear to make sure that the base isn't shoving down on something that it isn't, and we want to also make sure that all of our rescue tools are not shoving themselves down into the street. Now our rams have a very good position with a rotating handle where we can get this handle out of the way and rotate the head of the entire base of the ram into a position where we could spin it, get that patient out with the ram still in place. You want to go slow with your ram operation and you don't want to be greedy. We have more than enough space to get the patient's lower extremities out and it is much higher than the position that it started in when they got in the accident in the first place. So we want to make sure that we don't get too greedy with it because we want to prevent things from underneath the dash or the firewall or the footwall from, from shooting down into the patient's uh, lower extremities. This episode of Back to Basics Training Tips has been brought to you by Genesis Rescue Systems and Chicago's Bravest Stories Podcast. Thank you for your support. We'll see you soon.